Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. 9.30 on June 17th. Good morning, good morning. Hoping, there we go. It looks like I'm live now. Waiting for some people to tune in. Um, and there's a notification. Let's see if I found sound check. Let's see. Yep, uh, you can hear me. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, it is, my, what's it? Thursday. Thursday, June 17th. Do we, have, do we have jazz tonight, Jamie? We do. We have jazz in the garden? 6.30 to 9.30 9.30 night. Jazz in the garden in Roman time. We had a great event last night in the garden. Uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, like, what, 50 people here last night, huh, Jamie? 50 people, yeah. Yeah, it was awesome last night to see um, the restaurant nice and busy. We weren't open for regular business, but we had a chamber mixer here. We got some free food and um, did some... Um, uh, of course, um, open bar, cash bar. Um, so good morning, everybody tuning in. Uh, good morning, Susan. Good morning, Joel. Good morning. Um, it is the 17th. Uh, so it felt great last night to have um, to have the place busy, like busy with all the restrictions lifted now. Everybody was happy. Um, I uh, sabered a bottle of champagne to uh, to celebrate uh, the first, uh, you know, first of uh, first event the chambers had since February of 2020. February 2020, we were at the last event up on the mountain at Sammy Brown's. Um, that was the last event. Um, Courtney's here now, and she brought a friend today. Come here, Zeus. Come here, Zeus. <laughs> Guess we have a visitor in the office today. Zeus is with us. Um, <laughs> one of Courtney's three dogs. Oh, we have to be careful about. So, um, uh, good morning, Jennifer. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. So, I want to talk about um, truth and menu. Truth and menu today. Uh, there is a national food chain that's in a little hot water for their so-called sustainable seafood, and they are getting sued in California um, because um, people are saying your menu is not really what it says it is, and that happens so much. That happens a lot, and um, there's a restaurant here locally within 10 minutes of here that um, I need to talk to the owner about removing wild off of his uh, salmon salmon entree. Removing the word removing the word wa- removing the word wild. He thinks his Scottish salmon is wild, and it's not wild Scottish salmon. So um, there's this gr- really nice restaurant that we had um, in um, in Nantucket. Not in Tanda, we didn't go to Nantucket. We went to Martha's Vineyard that um, claims that their Faroe, Faroe Island salmon is wild. And, of course, it's not. And I've called them. I've spoken to them. Um, and they're still advertising it a month later. So I'm going to call them again and, and just remind them to please remove that and don't mislead any guests. But in California, Red Lobster is in trouble. There's a class action lawsuit against Red Lobster. Now, it's not a small mom-and-pop place, right, uh, or independent place. Um, You would think Red Lobster, with their legal team and um, all the resources they have, would be on top of this. And um, so they have this. Let me read the article here. Where is the article at? So um, California woman sues Red Lobster for deceptive advertising on sustainable Maine lobster and their shrimp. So um, Maine lobster. So first of all, the word Maine lobster is thrown around a lot. People, we don't really use Maine lobster. We've never really used Maine lobster. We use coming much more north um, in, in um, off that plate there um, in the uh, in Canada uh, is where our lobsters typically come from. Um, people just use the word Maine lobster as more of a trade name, but there's actually a region, the Gulf of Maine, um, that some of those lobsters from Maine are actually coming from Canada as well because it's the Gulf of Maine. So people refer to cold water lobsters or North American lobsters. And if you've read my menus very carefully over the years, very rarely will I write the word Maine. The problem right now with Maine is Maine got bumped down on the certification of sustainability because of uh, right whales, those big black uh, right whales. They, um, of course, they, the lobsters, the lobsters, the way they fish lobsters and they drop the nets or the, the traps or the pots, the entanglement um, in the whales is an issue in that part of, of Maine. Um, northern northern Canada, it's not really an issue, but right there in Maine. So Maine, the Pacific Maine lobster got dropped, knocked down um, on the sustainability rankings on Monterey Bay Aquarium because of this. Now, the right whale has had many problems over the years. Um, we had almost decimated the species in the 1870s, 1880s, 1890s. This whale was um, 
completely, almost completely decimated. They only said there's about 400 left right now anyway. And there was a, um, I guess a couple of years ago, um, all of a sudden some sudden deaths of these, about 40 of them just died. Um, I guess they washed up on shore, they were injured, they died. I'm not sure what exactly happened, um, but that was a headline I'd read as well. Um, so this this whale, they're trying to protect this whale, so they're, um, they've downgraded, Monterey Bay Aquarium has downgraded the main lobster. Now, um, like I said, main lobster is just one of those terms people use. A lot of lobsters do not come from Maine. They're coming from, they used to come really heavily from Long Island as well, um, but those days have long been gone of really great catches on Long Island. But they go all the way up, um, all through Canada, Newfoundland, all through there, um, uh, one of the issues that they're facing is all the salmon farms and all the chemicals they put in salmon farms are um, not that friendly to uh, to lobsters. And lobsters are known to die from some of those chemicals that they put in. Um, sometimes they'll find them all belly up in the bay because of what the salmon farms are doing. But that's a whole other issue. This is why I'm so anti-farmed salmon. So the, obviously Red Lobster is not a small little restaurant. Um, they probably have a lot of money to do a lot of research and do all these things. But they're still now being called out on this questionable uh on questionable seafood practices now their shrimp comes from china vietnam um india um i forgot where else they, they, they this was listed where all the shrimp comes from now there are some shrimp farms that are doing a better job than other shrimp farms but as an overall ho uh, whole shrimp coming from china shrimp coming from these regions are on the avoid list all of them are on the avoid list. Monterey Bay Aquarium really gets very specific. You know, years ago, we used to be able to hand out this little pocket card. Um, we sent this little pocket card for Monterey Bay Aquarium, and we did this before, you know, I had smartphones. And we handed these these seafood guides out to people because people that come into the restaurant are concerned about seafood and where it's coming from. A lot of people are. And so we would hand out these pockets, and it was very vague back then because you just had to have this little, like, business card size that would open up into three, four, five pages, six pages, and put all your information. Now, if you go to Monterey Bay Aquarium's website, uh, the Seafood Watch, you will see, Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch, you will see everything is in-depth by very specific regions um, and catch methods from each region. So if you look up lobsters, you'll find literally 15 boxes reports for lobsters in north america and gulf of st lawrence you know all st lawrence waterway there's all these different regions all these different catch methods and lobsters you know there's only two catch methods pot pot and trap which is really the same thing a pot is kind of a trap it is a trap um and they use them interchangeably a lot of times but if you look down you'll see trap caught trap caught pot caught and that goes down so um it gets very, very, very confusing. So a Southern California woman backed by a class action law firm is suing Red Lobster restaurant chain for deceptive advertising in federal court saying it falsely claims lobster for Maine is a sustainable fishery that follows the highest standards. Um, the suit highlights a Red Lobster menu that includes the claim of traceable, sustainable, and responsible um, and the filing called that a false claim because a federal judge found last year that the U.S. fish, U.S. lobster fishery poses a threat to endangered North Atlantic right whales, a finding that led to part of Maine's lobster fishery losing certification as a sustainable, uh, sustainable by the influential Marine Stewardship Council. So the Marine Stewardship Council is one who downgraded this. Um, of course, Red Lobster um declined comment on this um the fishermen uh the fishermen in the state have been oh so but they didn't make an email the fishermen in the state have been working together for the right for over 20 years now and made great strides lacrosse said uh the fishermen have made lots of changes in their gear that are uh, they use and the way they fish in order to make it safer for right whales uh, Red Lobster spoke, oh no, I'm sorry, Red Lobster spokesperson declined comment on this suit, but an email said the company stands behind its Seafood with Standards program. So I guess they have a Seafoods with Standard program at Red Lobster. But if you go to a lot of stores, I mean, grocery stores, everything, there's all this verbiage of, of this salmon sustainable, this is sustainable, that's sustainable. And you really just have to wonder, like, like, I look at a lot of this stuff, I'm like, as soon as you put farm salmon on it, you're telling me it's sustainable. I mean, I know that's a, a stretch, a very far stretch of the imagination uh, for sustainable salmon. Um, so, and then it, this article goes on to talk about their shrimp and where they shrimp their source their shrimp from and the issues with shrimp farming in those parts of the world. I think probably 
Bangladesh is might be one of the worst places. If you go online and look up in YouTube, you'll find places, um, YouTube documentaries and videos on what they do in Bangladesh with shrimp farming. It is pretty, pretty bad, pretty pathetic. Um, but, um, but it's cheap and restaurants like it. Restaurants love that. It's really, really cheap product. Um, so, um, of course, why wouldn't restaurants buy that? So most restaurants, so independent, so if, if Red Lobster is under question, folks, you need to question in independent restaurants because independents, they don't have, you know, the, for a chain like Red Lobster, and Joel said it's Darden, Darden's a, a big company that owns, chain, owns these chains. They, usually the big chains are the ones that, that know what they're doing and that have everything right. When I was in, we went to Foley's one time. And um, Foley's used to have a nice restaurant in the Nyack Mall. And Foley's is a seafood market. They sell wholesale seafood across the country to chefs all across the country. They are like, they're like a Steve Connolly seafood. They're one of the guys out there that knows what they're doing and this and that. And we were eating there one night. And um, the special came out. And I used to love their wine program. They used to have like 40 wines by the glass. And the staff was so knowledgeable about wine. Legal, legal seafood. Is it legal or Foley's? Legal seafood. Legal seafood. Legal seafood. I'm sorry. Foley's is another fish vendor too. Legal. Legal sells sells the chefs across the country too. So legal seafood. Um, so you have legal Foley's and Steve Connolly, like the big three in Boston. Legal seafood is the name of the restaurant that we went to. Yeah, but they're also a distributor. Oh, are they? They sell to restaurants across the country. Yep. Oh, Foley's too. Legal. Legal. Foley's legal and Steve Connolly are the big guys in Boston. And um, so yeah, restaurants can buy from them. So they're really on top of their seafood. And great wine program, 40 wines by the glass. Staff was super knowledgeable. We used to go there and be like, to the staff, like, how do they train you here? Like, tell us what they do. We would, like, pick the, pick the bartender's brain um, and get ideas because it was just very impressive. Um, so the training there was impeccable. And um, one night she goes, um, our tonight's special is Alaskan, um, you know, wild Alaskan salmon. And I knew the salmon, wild Alaskan salmon season was over. Um, and I'm like, Really? I'm like, it's from Alaska? Oh, she went and checked with the chef, and she came back. Oh, yeah, it's from Alaska. It's from Alaska. And I said, eh, I never ordered it. So at the end of the meal, I said, you know, the reason I didn't order your salmon is because I don't believe it's from Alaska. And so she went back to the chef again, and they came. she came back to me like 10 minutes later. And she goes, you're right. It's not from Alaska. It's from Washington State. Still wild, but from Washington State. And but these are things that nobody really questions these people on because they believe everything they're saying. And legal seafoods is is a big operation, and there's no reason not to question them because you think they know what they're doing. So then you have to really like wonder, well, there's the seafood extra. So now what are the grocery stores doing? Like what are like Hannaford's and Shoprites and what are all these places doing that claiming they're they're serving something sustainable and or you know no anti no antibiotics? I saw on the Shoprite um, um, flyer that they have this great Norwegian salmon without antibiotics. Or some something like that. I forgot. I forgot what it said. And of course, Nor Norway as a whole has tried to eliminate and get rid of antibiotics and this and that. But folks, farm salmon. The antibiotics are the least of your worries in, in farm salmon. The least of your worries. All the pesticides, all the chemicals, all the other stuff that they're just. That's like that's like saying you know start smoking today because we're going to put vitamin C in cigarettes. That's just one element. Right, just one element that they're advertising that they can make maybe a claim on. Well, antibiotics, you know, this or that. So um, there's so many more things than antibiotics in uh, salmon that you should be worried about. So it's just um, not a good thing to begin with. But that's it, folks. I just wanted to share that that article about Red Lobster, how they're in hot water over that. Um, and they're not the only ones um, that have, have had issues, big chains that have had issues uh, in the past. Nobody really attacks the small restaurants um, because the big chains are, you know, the ones that are serving thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. I mean, the, the two restaurants that I mentioned on, earlier in this live here, I mean, who really goes there? Who really knows what they're doing? Um, and who really cares? But I'm, I'm going to call them both back and just make sure that they change their menu on the salmon so it represents that they are serving farmed salmon, not wild salmon. So I would love to go around to restaurants like Undercover. In fact, back in 2010, 2011, I had, did a, a sizzle program. I did a pro, paid, it's called a, pay, a sizzle, which is a pre. Um, what do they do when they start a series? What do they do with Jamie when they start a series? They do not a trailer. What do they do? The premiere episode. I don't know. What's it called? According to you know what it's called? The premiere episode. So, I don't know. But 
Yeah, like a trial, like a trial. Yeah, like they do like, yeah. So a sizzle's pre that. It's the step before that. You make a sizzle that's like, I don't know, 15. And that out to the... Yeah, so a talent, talent agent, talent company, a production company will create these sizzles based upon an idea that they want to sell to a network. And, um, pilot. Pilot, pilot. Yep, yeah, the pre-pilot, so a pilot. <laughs> so I did a sizzle once on food fraud, and it was really exciting. I loved it. And um, Bravo actually paid for it, so it was a paid it was a paid sizzle, which are which are great when you get a paid sizzle because you have all these um, talent companies, production companies that are going out on a limb and producing it themselves and hoping that they're going to sell this. Sell this, Cheryl said. Pilot, uh, Craig said. Pilot, thanks, Craig. Um, a few people said. It. Okay, so <laughs> that's what you got from. Okay, <laughs> thank you, folks. Um, so there's the show goes. Um, all right, so. The casting company, the production company, they go out on a limb and they go, we got this great idea for a show. So we're going to go out and make a sizzle, uh, which is like a 10-minute, 15-minute, you know, that they can then send to the network like Bravo, Food Network, and then hopefully get somebody to bite on it and sell the program, right, or produce a program in conjunction with them. So when you have the company like Bravo or Food Network go to the production company and say, hey, here's... $25,000, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a show on food fraud, round up a chef and a, and a food expert, whatever, and make us a sizzle. Well, that's what, exactly what happened. Bravo went to um, this company in um, Jersey. This was about a decade ago I did this. And um, gave them like 25 grand, said, here, make this sizzle happen. Pick the chefs out, pick the chef, the food expert, this or that. And um, I had fun shooting for two days. We went into restaurants, undercover, and of course it's staged when you're doing when you're doing stuff like this, the sizzles and everything. But the impact, you know, certain people certain people don't know that it's staged in here, so it's like a setup. So the restaurant owner doesn't know it's a, doesn't know it's a, and it was pretty funny because um, the food dis how what happened? They invited the food distributor in, the big food distributor in, and um, the restaurant owner said, "Hey, come in for lunch. I want to meet with you," and um, I walk out of the kitchen, and the, 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 the big shot from the food company is there. And the restaurant owner is like, I want you to introduce you to Marcus Giuliano. And I'm like, hi, I'm Marcus Giuliano. I'm a food fraud chef, and I need to talk to you about the calamari you're selling to John here. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, this calamari isn't calamari. It's it's pork anus. And the guy's like, the guy's like no. And I, I like, played into the role, and the, so the food – so I was like, we need to go to your warehouse right now. We need lot numbers. We need this. And and the other person was with me like, yep, yeah, we got all technical. And, and we're like, we need to go to the warehouse. We need to pull lot numbers. We need to inspect stuff. And this is a lot of trouble. Here are the fines and this and that. And the guy was like, the guy's face turned red. I thought he was going like, to hit me, hit me on camera. Like, and I was like, I was like going after him like, this is wrong. I can't believe you're doing this. And and the guy's face turned really, really red. And, and after that, the... Um, the owner of the production company was like, oh, my gosh, that was the perfect reaction that we got, like this and that. And once they broke it to him what was going on, he couldn't believe it. But so it was like a massive prank pulled on this food distributor. But it was so some people knew, some people didn't. And it was really cool. I would love to go into restaurants and um, and see really what's going on and bust these restaurants for lying to us. Because a lot of these restaurants are downright lying to us, downright lying to us. Um, and they know that farm salmon is bad. They know that certain things are bad, and they just downright lie. They know that trans fats are bad. They know that corn syrup's bad. I fructose corn syrup. They know all this stuff is bad. They know all these chemicals are bad. And you know that's why when anybody ever comes in here, oh, what's in your brownies? What do you? Here's the brownie mix we use. Right here you go. This is it. Well, what's in you know the papadoms? Here's the package of papadoms. Right here. I'm proud of everything we have in the restaurant. And last night, some people at the chamber mixer were. They wanted two sodas, and they were like, we want a Pepsi or a Coke. And we're like, well, we have an organic agave sweet. And they're like, um, agave? They're like, agave sweet? And they're like shaking their heads like, um, I, what else do you have? And so we're like, well, all of our sodas are organic. So then I, I chime in and said, I said, listen, all of our sodas have no sodium benzate. They have no artificial caramel colorings. They have no funky chemicals. It's a natural soda. Just try it. And and But you had to, like, coerce people and, and like, 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 lead them to the water and once they taste it they're like oh okay yeah this is like regular soda but as soon as you start saying sometimes some of that stuff people are like oh i'm not going to consume that like why would i want that so um it's it's funny how that works all right folks i gotta get going i gotta run to jersey today um Don't and to tell them about our special this week oh yeah
What is our store? Fig and bacon pizza. Fig and bacon pizza with organic, real organic arugula, real organic black mission figs, um, real nitrate free bacon. <laughs> um, Nine ninety nine um, for takeout and Father's Day. Uh, Five dollar pints of beer for Father's Day. We're gonna be busy on Father's Day, folks. So call and make a reservation. If you want a cowboy steak, we'll have cowboy steaks back. The twenty six ounce cowboy. Um, don't know the price of it yet, but it, is, it will be back for Father's Day. Make reservations six four seven three thousand for reservations. Jazz tonight. jazz tonight, Thursday night, jazz night in the garden. Jazz starts at what time, Jamie? Six thirty. Six thirty two. 6.30 to 9.30. Three hours of jazz in the garden. Um, hopefully, I'll be back. So, all right, folks. Have a great day. And I just got to run the jersey and um, got to drop off my, my road bike, my bicycle, because the frame cracked on my carbon bike. So, I got to get that fixed. I'm going to a place called Swamp Ghost down in Ashbury Park, dropping my bike off. I'll have it for a couple of weeks. Um, so, it's my extra, my extra road bike. All right, folks. That's it. Have a great day. And we'll talk to you later.